at 20 years of age I'm still looking for a dream A war's already waged For my destiny But you've already won the battle And you've got great plans for me Though I can't always see Cause I got a couple dents in my rise for the presentation of our graduates. from Leaders for Christ Training Center. So if your family or friends just thank you for being a part of this day. I'm sure your graduates are uh, really glad that you could be a part of this special day. We're making a big deal out of this because this is a big deal and uh, we're really excited about the commitment uh, that these students have shown over the last 18 months to apply themselves uh, to becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ and treasuring God's Word and putting it into practice. And I wanted to share a few words with you today uh, before we continue with uh, the ceremony. And uh, my message today uh, for our graduates would be entitled, You Are God's Copy. And that'll make more sense as, uh, as I share a few scriptures with you. But uh, to start out with, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, uh, there's a commandment to every king who would ever be a king over the nation of Israel. And uh, here's the commandment that was given. When he takes the king, when he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law, taken from that of the priests who are Levites. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life, so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow, follow carefully all the words of this law and these decrees, and not consider himself better than his brothers, and turn from the law to the right or to the left, that he and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. So the king was supposed to write his own copy of, at the time, of what, uh, what is being referred to as the law, is what we refer to today as the Torah, or the, about that much of the Bible, the first five books of the Bible. And the king was to make his own copy. And keep it with him at all times. And he used to study it every day of his life so that he would fear God. And he would follow and lead uh, his nation, himself, and the people under him according to God's ways. Because God's ways work. And uh, God's law or God's word is life to us. And so God gave it to us as a gift so that we could get the most out of life. So that, that was a command I just discovered a few years ago. Uh, never really noticed that before and just was really intrigued by that. But there's, there's another part of that that I want to bring to light today. And I have mentioned this before in, in the past on, on a Sunday morning. But first of all, even this morning I mentioned the, the fact that God calls us kings and priests. And so my message to the graduates are that God has made you kings and priests too. And in Revelation 1 verse 5 and 6 it says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests, to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So God calls us uh, into his kingdom and he empowers us to be priests uh, to this world. And as a king is enlisted into the service, as we are kings enlisted into the service of the king, we are also commissioned, right, to, to know his word and, and to write our own copy. Except uh, the beauty about this is the new covenant that God makes with us, that he writes the copy for us. 
And he doesn't write it on tablets of stone, like the first copy was written on Mount Sinai. But the Holy Spirit begins to write his word on the flesh of our hearts. And that's what's so beautiful. And that's why I commend our students today for allowing God space and time and the Holy Spirit to be able to write his word on your heart. Um, Psalm 1 verses 1 through 3 says this about the word. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. And he is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. And so as you have been immersing yourself in the word of God these last 18 months, uh, I just continue to urge you and challenge you uh, to continue to meditate and love and, and allow God to write this on your heart so that you will be prosperous in all that you're doing. Uh, and the second thing about this is not just uh, we are kings and priests, but Jesus is the king of kings. Okay, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And the Bible says that every knee will, will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord of all, that he is the king of kings. And uh, in a real sense, we are the little kings, okay? He's placed us here to rule in his stead through his spirit. But he is the king. And this is what's so amazing to me, and this is uh, so exciting to me, that as the king, the king of kings, he is writing his copy of the word on your heart and mine. <laughs> That's so beautiful. He's writing his copy, his copy of the word that he's writing according to the law is written on your heart and on my heart. And uh, just to give you a little insight into that, Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-three says, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And in 2 Corinthians, Paul kind of alludes to the same concept when he says, you show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And so we see the Holy Spirit is writing his word on our hearts at all times. So as we study and apply and obey the word of God, the Holy Spirit has the material to write to, um, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, to... Uh, impart his word upon our hearts. And when it's imparted to us, when it's not a head thing or a knowledge-based thing, but it is written on our hearts, that's when it transforms our lives. From the very beginning of your journey at Leaders for Christ Training Center, uh, I and your other facilitators have been encouraging you to let God impart, uh, that there would be an impartation of his word into your life, that you wouldn't just cognitively or intellectually learn some things, but that you would feel an impartation of God's spirit and his life on you and his word would be written on your heart and come alive in you. We trust that that's what's happened uh, for you during this, these 18 months. Uh, in Leaders for Christ, uh, you have learned, among other things, just a couple things I wanted to highlight. Sozo, right? The all-inclusive word of salvation. There's healing, wholeness, and deliverance through Jesus. Uh, you learned about supernatural living and the power of the Holy Spirit, with Papa Gill. Uh, you learned the seven mountain strategies for discipling the nations. You've learned the Christ connection through T.L. Osborne, that there is this revelation of Christ in me, the hope of glory. You've learned so many other things, but I hope that those things have been an impartation into your life that will guide you uh, on your journey that God has created for you. And these are not head, head knowledge things. These are heart awakenings. These are moments of revelation from the Spirit of God uh, to us that empowers us, that renews us, that releases us, that transforms us, you know, to do all that God has called us to do. And that's the beauty of God's Word. The Bible says that it is literally the Word of God. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts beyond all the other stuff right into the true heart of who we are and what we're about. And uh, as we continue to give God space to work, he does a beautiful transformation in our hearts and lives. Uh, last couple of thoughts I wanted to share with you uh, before we can 
conclude this part of our ceremony and go on to some of the other uh, diplomas and congratulations and all that is that the process uh, that you are on and I am on and it's a lifelong journey is a process of becoming. I love the quote, uh, I think his name is Soren Kierkegaard who says, uh, by the grace of God, I am becoming who I already am. And there's a process of becoming. Uh, we lost something at the fall. We lost the image of God. We lost uh, our, our true connection and, and relationship with God. And ever since then, we have been trying to regain who we really are. And that's what the Spirit does. He re- renews us. He rewires us. He transforms us. And so we are becoming who we already are, who God already sees us to be, and who we need to, by faith, believe that is who we are in Christ, in Christ. And so some of the things I found to be helpful that help that happen in our lives is surrender. The first one is that we need to continue to surrender ourselves to God, just to be humble. The Bible says that God gives grace to the humble, but he actually resists the proud. And so as students moving into your next journey, uh, as you graduate from this program, I just want to encourage you to continue to be surrendered to God, daily surrender. Humble yourself before God that you can continue to walk in his footsteps, that you will have a, just a beautiful relationship with him as you just continue to depend on him. Uh, another, another one is that the revelation. The Spirit is the one that brings revelation. It's not a great pastor or teacher or tape or a message. It is the Spirit of God who reveals the things of God to us. And so when we go to God, we ask for the Spirit to enlighten us and to, to quicken in us his truth so we can be like him. One of my favorite scriptures is, is a part of a prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 where Paul is praying. And part of the prayer says, May, may the glorious Father give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better. It comes from him, the revelation of God. That's how we uh, discover who we really are. And then the third part is action. That's our response. Uh, and I've discovered that when a heart bursts with revelation, that the body explodes into action. Okay? Faith, uh, tr- genuine faith, always produces works. It always produces action. It always produces a response. And so as God reveals to us, then we can't help but, you know, acting out in that new revelation. And it's just a beautiful thing. And so there is a command in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4, and 5. And this is the most, uh, in, this is the most precious command that the Jewish people uh, repeat in a prayer three times a day. It's called the Shema. It's because the first word of this prayer in Hebrew is Shema. And it means hear. And so the, the verse, uh, these verses goes like this. You probably know this very well. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is the prayer that our Jewish brothers and sisters around the world pray uh, multiple times a day. They start their day uh, with this prayer. And the word Shema means more than just hear. It means listen, take heed, obey, obey, listen, take heed. And so oftentimes in our scripture, when we read the word obey, it actually is this word Shema, to hear, to hear what the Spirit is saying. And Jesus oftentimes would say to his listeners, he would say, to whomever has an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. Take heed. Let them obey. Let them put this into practice. And, uh, and the sages teach that uh, we learn, the sages in our, in our Jewish heritage, they say we learn, uh, we study to learn to do. That's one of their famous phrases. We study to learn to do. And so we always are looking to not just merely listen to the word, but as James says, just do it. Just do it. Hear what God is saying and put it into practice. Shema. Hear, O Israel. The Lord is God. He is one. Love him. Do this. Take heed. Obey. Come on. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. Isn't that a beautiful message? And so we are encouraged over and over again to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I want to conclude uh, with a verse out of John chapter 13. And this was said by Jesus himself. On the last night, as he had Passover meal with his disciples. He had just finished talking to them about serving. And he had just washed his disciples' feet. 
And, he, and he's preparing to have his final meal, and he's introducing to them the new covenant. And in these words, I want to challenge our students with these closing thoughts, because these are the closing thoughts that Jesus had for his disciples. And he said this in John thirteen seventeen. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Okay, and all the things that God has imparted into your life, uh, I just commend you for taking time, uh, making the sacrifice, putting the effort in, and sticking with it, and, uh, and going through all of those, those challenges. Uh, but now that you know these things, Jesus says, you will be blessed if you do them. So go ahead and do them. All right, and God bless you for it, and people will be blessed because of you. So I am so proud of you students, and so thankful that you are able to, to finish this journey. Okay, so now we are going to uh, go ahead. I want to introduce to you our board of directors here for Leaders for Christ. And as I do, they're going to come to the stage. And we're going to, yes. Oh, yes, Judy. One of our students uh, wanted to share a testimony before we hand out diplomas. Thank you, Chris. And so this is Judy Evans. Let's welcome Judy. Thank you. Do you want to use this? Oh, yes. There you go. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share some of the things that we did and learned and experienced through the classes of Leaders for Christ Training Center. We memorized the order of the books of the Old Testament. That was really cool. We had scripture memorization. We had homework. We had mid and final term exams. We learned about cell groups. This was very interesting and very pertinent for me. We learned that family is our first line of ministry. That is so cool. Uh, we learned about church planting. Uh, we enjoyed the fire of God's spirit in Reinhard Bonnke. And we enjoyed hearing uh, Dave Smith imitate him. <laughs> I was personally wowed when I was researching the scriptures on healing. I was just, wow. We learned about the new heaven and earth. Uh, we experienced the enjoyment of serving. We were supposed to serve 30 ministry hours per trimester. And um, it was cool. Um, I'm learning to be a lizard. Um, I discovered a title for a ministry in this local church, Vanna White. <laughs> uh, we learned how to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we had one teacher, our, our teachers were video teachers. We had in-person classroom facilitators, but our teachers, per se, were video teachers. And one was Reverend Wayne Myers. And he taught, he taught on uh, living to give. He was teaching us to be givers. In watching his teachings, a person would be motivated to be a giver just to have the joy that that man has. <laughs> um, we witnessed the contagiousness of Marilyn Hickey's passion for the word mm -hmm. of God. She talked of meditating on the Word of God. It made you want to go home and just open your Bible up and just start. Uh, we learned about Tehillah praise and Shabbat. I think that maybe I was doing Shabbat, but maybe had forgotten that that was the word for it. Um, this one I really, really liked. It was kind of a side video. I don't recall having any homework on it. But it was the one where we reserved, uh, received encouragement and confirmation that we can prophesy our own future. Scripture tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So there's power in the words that we speak. And that one, I really like that one. Mm -hmm. We learned about the suzerain treaty. We learned about the divine exchange. That, in a nutshell, is God took all of our bad, whatever it was, and gave us all of his good. And he doesn't limit it. That one, that was really cool. We learned about triumph and the triumphal procession. 
uh, we enjoyed the process of working on our exit projects. Um, we learned about eldership. That was really interesting to me. Uh, this is the most comprehensive teaching that I have received regarding eldership. And um, the word tells that, if, if I recall correctly, that an elder is worthy of double honor. And after learning about all the qualifications that an elder is supposed to have, <laughs> they are worthy of double honor. <laughs> um, under Ray Comfort, we learned law to the proud and grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. That was very interesting. Um, we learned about offense and the importance of not taking offense and if you have what to do, if you have taken offense. Um, Reverend T.L. Osborne was one of my favorites. And he stressed, preach Jesus. Uh, we learned about the guidelines for workers in children's ministry. Uh, some of the personal things um, that um, I received. I graduated, I'm going to tell my age here. I graduated from high school back in 1972. And... Um, uh, a lot of my adult life, I was a stay-at-home mom, and I have four grown children, and I really valued being a stay-at-home mom. And, but I began to recognize, it was probably subtle at first, but I, I began to recognize as time progressed, as my children and nieces and nephews and so forth, in the spring and the fall of the year, as they'd be going off to college, and then in the spring, as they'd be graduating from high school or graduating from college, I began to have this uneasy feeling inside of me. That's not there anymore, since I'm going to lead us for Christ. Hmm. Um, God, uh, during this process, was teaching me grace. Beautiful grace. Beautiful grace. Um... God's teaching me time management. We learned about uh, four different identities that people can have. The, uh, let's see if I got them right, the eagle, the man, the ox, and the lion. Thank you. I, um, and one of them, this is very interesting, um, we had a, a four-line quadrant. And if you were at the top of the quadrant, you were fast. If you were bottom of the quadrant, you were slow. Well, that, that fit me. And also one of the other squares had perfectionism. That also fits me. And they said this type of person might have to speed it up a little bit. So um, <laughs> I'm learning time management. I'm learning balance. I'm learning perseverance. I've had a couple uh, computer crashes. I had um, a case of the shingles. Uh, trimester had started. I wasn't there. I was thinking of quitting. My husband was my biggest cheerleader, and uh, I, so I'm here. Um, I experienced the love and unity of God's spirit in our class. That, that was really cool. We're a family. I learned to enjoy the process. Um, I'm letting go of perfectionism. I'm, th I'm learning to think outside the walls of the four church. I mean, the, the four walls of the church. We're called to be ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we're called to go out. So I'm learning to think outside these four walls. Mm -hmm. um, the purpose for leaders for Christ, one of the purpose, is to raise up leaders. Mm -hmm. And... I'm not saying this is so, but I suspect within this group right here, there may be the possibility of two pastors being raised up. Two elders already have been raised up. And I see potential for a leader on the arts Martin, mountain and maybe the media mountain also. And everybody else, I, I do not know. So I, I don't mean to be neglecting them, but these are just some that I, I suspect. 
And I think the last point I want to share, maybe <laughs> one of the biggest things that I've learned in Leaders for Christ is how much I don't know. And that is a good thing because it motivates you to want to learn more. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judy. If you have time, I'd love to have you join us after our ceremony for our afterglow, and we'll have a little bit more opportunity to hear some personal stories from the, from the graduates. Uh, but let's get on with the, the graduations. I want to introduce to you uh, the members of our Leader, Leaders for Christ uh, Training Center Board, and, uh, and I want to start with Kathy Wyatt. Kathy, would you come and take the stage? And she is our administrator, and she's also... Uh, our Dean of Students, and if you're here this morning, you heard me brag about her. Uh, this program would not be possible without Kathy's giftings and tenaciousness uh, to make it happen. So we are all indebted to Kathy for all the work she's done for us. Um, yeah, let's. Thank you, Kathy. And she will be announcing the students' names to receive their diplomas here. Also, I want to invite uh, to the stage uh, Keith and Cindy Harrison. Uh, they are facilitators, and also uh, Cindy is our academic dean. And Janet Morgan, would you please come to the stage? She is our acting treasurer and secretary. And then uh, the class of 2013, your facilitators this year, are Chris and Duane Vickerman and Rick Bingham. So Rick, would you please come and join us as well? And at this time, I want to invite our graduates to please stand. And if you would uh, take your positions over here for the presentation of your diplomas. Brenda Ashby. Judith Evans.
to pray for them. This is uh, our closing part of our ceremony, but it's very important to us that we lay our hands on them and commission them uh, to be the disciples that Jesus Christ has called them to be. And we want them to feel um, not just our support, but we want them to feel a release in God into their next steps um, in, in Him and in the calling that God has on their life. So would you guys kind of join us up here on stage? And if, uh, if we have any elders or care pastors left out there, would you please come up at this time? And we want to lay hands on our graduates. And I would like to invite all of us to stand at this time. And if you wouldn't mind, when we are praying, several people may pray out loud. If you would just extend your hand of blessing, uh, of agreement, your right hand, just as a sign that you're in agreement as we bless these students and we're all in this together. And so let's just uh, join our hearts together as we bless them. Has everybody got hands on them? Okay. Father, we thank you for one of these students. And Lord, we do thank you for their faithfulness and uh, their effort to study your word and become approved workmen of your word. And now, Lord, we commission them just into the next steps of their life. And we pray, Lord, right now that they would feel uh, just an empowerment by your Holy Spirit and encouragement. And they would feel a release right now and an, an, an anointing upon their lives to go forward from here into the next you have for them and we bless them right now in the name of Jesus Lord we think that you have called us to become disciples and then to go and make disciples of all the nations and so Lord we just commission them now in your name Jesus be with them strengthen them may they take the, all the things that you have imparted into them and be good stewards of all of these truths and of the spirit that you have given to them may they freely give now as they have received, may they be a great blessing in the world everywhere they go and everybody they come in contact with. May they spread the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, students, at this time you may move your tassels from the right and move it to the left. And... And it is my privilege and honor to introduce to you our graduating class of 2013 Leaders for Christ Training Center Montrose Campus. Yeah. Woo! Way to go. And I'm going to ask for our alumni to form a little welcome uh, line in the back for our students to go and enjoy. For our alumni, I want to thank them for coming and supporting the program today. And you will be the first ones to congratulate your fellow disciples 
in Christ as they leave. So thanks again for coming. And uh, if it's at all possible with your schedule, we'd love to have you stay in our afterglow. After some pictures are taken in here, uh, then we're going to have our afterglow reception in the back room of the church with some really great goodies. So thanks for coming. Let's just congratulate the class as they leave one more time. Thank <laughs> you.